would you do? And, and they were basically saying he did so much without having like 48 inch vert like Michael like. and being as big as LeBron. So it's, yeah. it, essentially it's it's everybody's argument. It's me, you and I argument. Imagine if we were six foot four, six yeah. foot two, sorry, six foot two as a safety, you know, yeah. like it would be a completely different. When you get into that, you can't even get into the ifs and buts. Like, right, like, exactly. You know what That's like, what I'm saying with Steph. No, Same I know shit. that, I know, but the way the video is describing, I know we're jumping right in this podcast talking about Kobe, which is appropriate. But it's episode eight, by the way, so that kind of just started us into. Just start it up. We'll All get right. On. Well, welcome to our Kobe, uh, young Kobe edition of uh, St. Pete Dudes. Um, I'm Ryan. We got Will, Jake. I'm glad to be back. For context, he said young Kobe because it's episode eight and Kobe Bryant was number eight. I'm so just assuming the audience like that's, knows what I'm Yeah, but not about. everybody understands that. Well, shame on them. Okay. Um, and we have a uh, guest. Coming in hot today, dude. Yes. I want you to introduce. Yes, Darius Williams. He's a local guy. Um, played ball in college and then into in the CFL. Um, so we're happy to have you, Darius. Appreciate, uh, appreciate it. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate yeah, y'all. Thanks nice for coming on the show, man. Yes, sir. Two, uh, two guests, back to back weeks. Um, like I said, glad to be back. I was not here last week, so the boys held it down. Um, I felt like what I was, was wrong away. again. You're I was sick. A jo- oh. Oh, here. See, <laughs> see what I mean? This is we can't do anything. Um, I was sick. <laughs> And under the weather, it's the holidays, it's been cold outside, it's allergy season, uh, but I won't go, you know, into my medical history. Okay. Um, you know do- what? I heard this on the radio. I just have to throw out a fun fact before we get okay. into it. Because he said, it's cold, is sick. I heard on the radio that you actually get sick, not because you're outside in the cold, but because you're inside surrounded by people breathing on each other. Mm. Kind of so checks out. I live by myself, so I don't know how that works. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, you, maybe. You go to work. You see people, you're in... Anyway. You around people, you're going to get sick. It's a very wide open space, though. It's not like confined, uh-huh. you know, tight spaces. Nobody's breathing on you? God, I hope not. Not that I know yeah, of. Yeah. Okay. You close to people? Like, you, like, right next to them? He works at his church. And I, yeah. Are you right next to the people, though? Uh, I don't like being as people. Like, yeah. super, no, like, I working, mean... It's supposed to be working, like, you working like I'm, I'm probably rarely as close to somebody as this. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, straight, but this is just because I mean? the camera, you know, where it is, what it is. So, all right, well, let's get into it. Is that it. white chocolate, by the way? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, But there is obviously white chocolate. However, he's a gator. So there's a little parallelism here. I was wondering because it looks awful. Oh, that's kind of fun, though. I like how you did that. I'm just saying. Thank you. No, I'm just saying, like, the color scheme is awful. for sure. But But when when you you explain it, it, exactly. When you explain it, it makes sense. I love it. With the mainly, thank you, the primary uh, color being, you know, all black, a little bit of blue accent. God forbid it's a different, you know, contrast in colors. So let's quit roasting me and let's get to the. uh, the topic, um, we'll talk about Jake's Brady shirt, who I thought it was Aaron Rodgers. Let's so go. White. Never seen this one before. You ever seen Brady brand? Oh, that's the Brady brand. That yeah. makes sense that. now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's start with Brady's second former team. Okay. Um, the Bucks huge weekend. Essentially win and you're in. If they lose, they're in trouble. So let's not worry about it. Um, I'm going to start real quick with the Baker thing. This is what he's good for. Okay. He a bad game. A stretch. He's super solid. He looks like, you know, top 15 QB. And then there's a clunker, and we don't know why. Okay, let's talk about that game a little bit. Because, yes, he started off a little, little slow. I mean, the whole offense did. Right. But did you see the 70-yard bomb that was a self-fumble at the end of the game? So they ended up coming back. And what was the score at that time? We were, we were down two touchdowns at that time. Well. That would have been a touchdown. We ended up scoring again, which would have tied the game up. <laughs> The man fumbled without being touched. Okay. Everybody knows as 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 a I mean all the receivers and everything, right? When you when you catch the ball, so he caught the ball. It was a beautiful catch, by the way. He had reached out, and right? Fingertips and everything. But when you're stumbling and you're going to the ground forward, the reaction should always be what? You gotta flip to your back, right? Right. You flip to your He's back. He's trying to make a play. Hold on. He goes out with the arm. Ball comes out. Trying to get more yards. Trying to get more yards, but for what? There's no reason to no get point. more yards right there. He would. He, he was. He already had sure. 70 yards. You always slip to your back. Always. But, but when to we your talking back. about that game as a whole, like it was the, bad. The Bucks just came out. You know what I'm saying? You could just feel like yes. it wasn't like them. Like normally, right. you know what I'm saying? They didn't come out with really no energy. And when you talk about Baker, like. I wouldn't say it's Baker's fault. Like everybody has a bad game. Like, it's football. Like everybody has a bad game. Like he could come back in this this next game versus the Panthers and have a good game and they in the playoffs and people right. forget about that right. last game. For so, sure. For I sure. Figure out what the flicker on. is. Should I kill that thing? 
Oh, it might be. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna go hit it. Yeah, go ahead. Char- <laughs> gives a little character. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know. I mean, a few more strokes, I would have had a stroke yeah. myself. Yeah. The uh, oh, dude. Baker, you know, I've always liked Baker. I'm not. I'm not bashing him for this game. And like you said, you know, with the catch, you're trying to roll over. You're trying to make a play happen. You're down two scores. Momentum's kind of getting on your side. And it's just one of those games. And, and I'll preface mm-hmm. this. It was an amazing catch. A great throw. Amazing catch. I'm not, I'm not taking away. I think it's Palmer or something. Trey Palmer. Like, yeah, it's Palmer. Okay. Uh, but he's got to flip over. And that's a whole different ball game. But I'll go on record to say, if we lose to the fucking Panthers yeah. in the last game of the season... I might it, never. It ain't, ain't going to happen. Bro. I might never I might never be a Bucks not, fan it's, ever it's again. Not, it's like, not going to happen. Bro. Who would you can't. switch to? I might have to go to I Miami. Have, you know? really, like, there we oh, go. Wow. <laughs> Miami. Where? I yeah, do like Miami, though. I like yeah, Miami. Yeah, they look good. And, and, and speaking of Miami, huge game this weekend. With, That's probably the other headline okay, of this week. Yeah, it's the In biggest. Miami against the Buffalo Bills. So this one's an interesting game, too, because Buffalo's 10-6. and six, Miami is 11-5. If Miami has... The head-to-head uh, yeah. early in the season over them. If Buffalo wins this, which is now sitting at the seventh seed, they would flip, and Buffalo would get the second seed and home field advantage. Home field and unless and you know until they play the uh, first round by. So now that we're yes. talking about the game, no, not a first Can we get some picks for the game? Who, I would who, who does everybody like? Uh, right, okay, so let, let's go through uh, a couple. There's only a couple. Go so ahead, let's get to it. All right, um, I love honestly. I mean, the Bucks and the Panthers. Uh, let's start there. We'll I mean, that's there. obvious, right? Sneaky though, the line is only four and a half. I don't is know it? if you like look at the lines. Uh, trust me, I, I know, I know. Okay, that, uh, only four and a half. What's, what's, see what I mean? What's the underdog money line? Oh gosh, he is I'm not there that. yet. Um, if well, how do the, you? If it's in the plus one fifties, I'd be a little concerned. Hey, well, how do you feel about the Bucks betting. chances this weekend? <laughs> what do you think about the Bucks this weekend? Like Jake said, we got it. If I, we're not beating the worst team in the league, dude. Number one, we don't deserve to make the playoffs. That's for sure. But I don't know. It's got to be the Bucks. On my pickums, ninety three percent Bucks. I mean, it's it's in Carolina though, right? So Man. that's the only. Not that it really matters. But what's going on with the Saints versus Falcons though? Man, I don't care if it's in Carolina. If it's in it better. Louisiana, it could be in Cali. It could be in China. The Bucks gonna win, bro. It don't matter, bro. I need win, what I need win. is I need Winfield to take over. He's been a dog all season. Speaking of Winfield. Can we talk about the Pro Bowl? Like he got snubbed in. He didn't get the. Pro- I didn't even he realize didn't that. A, he didn't get in there. And guess what? They put Buda Baker in there. And oh, get, he hasn't even been playing. He ain't had no stats. No bro. stats. No nothing. You know oh my! I've been on record. I've been on record on this podcast talking about Winfield. He, he the best safety in the league right fuck, now. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. fucking dog. Finn. Like making plays, making like plays. ridiculous. The fact that he's on the Pro there, Bowl. There's a little window between you know playoff teams and the Super Bowl to where not everybody who's in the Pro Bowl right now will be there, so Winfield might sneak in. However, it's almost like the disrespect where you're not initially in. You're not initially in, exactly. Yeah, as a Pro Bowler, bullshit. which is ridiculous. But anybody who's in the Tampa Bay area who is a Bucks fan knows Antoine Winfield is uh, among the elite. All right, so, let's do quick picks, you. quick picks. Go ahead. Okay, um, I'm going to go with the Bucks just because we I'm We already homer. did this one next. All right, well, I didn't, I didn't get my say. Okay, so next one, I'm going to go, uh, I, I, I like L- the Rams at San Francisco. This is sneaky. The Rams have been on a little roll, and San Francisco got absolutely embarrassed by the Ravens. Yeah, Christmas but time. the Carson quarterback Wentz. is not playing. Stafford's not playing. Carson Wentz is starting for the Rams. So uh, you got to audition for I, other teams I think, for Carson. I think you're going with. I'm going with. Yeah, 49ers. you got to go 49ers. Um, Mine's so. only four right there, by the way, which is yeah. interesting as well. That, th- oh. This week, by the way, with Pickums, because I do the Pickums every week, is. You have to look at, since it's week 18, sure. who's playing, who's not playing. Um, I think the Ravens are sitting everybody, basically, so that's a big deal. Uh, Tyler Huntley's the backup, though, isn't he? He is. He's and he been can solid play. every time for he sure. plays. For well, you sure. said you like the Rams? No, no, no. I oh, said okay. the 49ers. I about to say, yeah. I ain't yeah, Carson no. Wentz. Yeah, so that's a clean sweep. San Francisco, <laughs> 49ers. Yeah, right. Okay, next. Okay. Um, let's round it out with Buffalo and Miami. Okay, yeah, let's stop there. Buffalo's actually favorite on the road as well. Which is interesting. Yeah, I. It's so hard with Miami just because they're so up and down. It's like a fucking roller coaster. Mm-hmm. Same with same with the the Buffalo Bills. I got Miami though this weekend. Both of their trajectories are going in different directions right now. The Bills, you know, all year were a little bit rocky, and now they're kind of coming yeah. up. And yeah. Miami, the narrative all year has been they can't beat a team with a winning record. Yep. And this is another test against the the Buffalo Bills. So who do you got? 
I'm going Buffalo. All right. The thing with the Dolphins, you know what I'm saying, they have a lot of injuries right now. So you got to put that into factor. You know, Chubb is hurt. He literally the last play of the game. He's towards ACL, right? Exactly. Yeah, they already X, lost. X, I think his foot, his foot is something wrong with his foot. So, like, they have a lot of injuries right now. So I'd have to see the injury report before the game. Yeah. So that plays a factor. But me personally, I, I want Miami to win. So I guess I'll, I'll take Miami. So Tyreek will be playing, right? Yeah, Waddle, I think, will be playing. Be I don't playing. know if Moster is in. But I, yeah, he's but you have A-Chan. So A-Chan's just A-chan, as good. A-Chan, going to get the job done. Yeah, he's yeah. just as good. But the defense is big, big point. You said Xavier, How- Xavier Howard. Yep. So. And so, so who you going you gonna to put Van Ginkle? Van Ginkle already took the spot of Jacob Phillips. Yeah. So now right. who's else going to be the right. other edge rusher? Right. So their D-line is going to be Finn. gonna be this slim. Is, I mean, it is the biggest game of the year for probably both teams just yeah. because of playoff implications. Yeah. But I will say one thing in the Dolphins, when after A-Chan got injured early in the season, yeah. I feel like that changed the com- the entire dynamic of yeah. that offense. Whereas if he stays healthy, they're rolling. Yeah, I mean, the devil's advocate with that is Mostert's kept scoring, you know. But yes, it was a good dynamic to have HN in there, catch ball out of the backfield, make huge plays because yeah. that's what he did. Who do you got? And, Miami, Buffalo. Yeah, I'm going to take Buffalo just based on what you said. It's the momentum pick. Yeah. Um, and you said that Miami's trending downward too. So seems seems like that's the way to go. I th- yeah, and it, you know, it's Miami, so it's not going to be super cold. I think Buffalo will be okay down there as opposed to the Dolphins yeah, up in yeah. the blizzard. Yeah. Um, all right, let's let's uh, let's round it out. Uh, let's go to the college game. Okay. Did you guys watch those two semifinals of last course. week? Absolutely. Um, I was a betting man trying to behave myself. Are you? More, but <laughs> I bet five bucks on the first game to go to overtime, and I won 60. <laughs> Just saying. Um, I did lose the other <laughs> ones, though. So uh, I was rooting for Bama. I am an SEC homer, yeah. as you can tell. Yeah. Um, but I do like new skin in the game. So Michigan and Washington being, um, you know, two teams. Michigan probably more the blue blood, but um, – we got we got a new face as the top of the mountain college football. What do you think about the games, and then what do you think about this matchup for the yeah? Uh, before the we get to the championship, let's talk about each individual yeah, game. Go right ahead, there. go ahead. So uh, the Michigan Bama game. Me personally, I, I knew I knew Michigan was going to win the game. Obviously, when you're talking about betting and stuff, when you put Bama and Michigan and all the money's on Bama, like obviously, like you know what I'm saying, yeah. Mich- Michigan is there, but obviously. Alabama had Jalen Milrow offensive line is kind of that was the problem exactly. Alabama's this year hasn't been Alabama as no, as we know it. Absolutely not. So they came in a game. It's probably the worst Bama team to go to like a top notch game like this, mm-hmm. which is crazy. Exactly. And, and on the other side, Michigan has been this as dominant as they bought as ever. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So this is one of Michigan's best teams. So you're going against a top notch Michigan team versus yeah. a, like a mid Alabama team, and then you have Quorum. You have the run game. You have Michigan's D line, which got after Jalen Murrow in the offensive line. Yeah. So they have a lot of things going into that factor. And, and McCarthy, he's a, he's a decent quarterback. So thank you. Uh, we'll talk about <laughs> that Michigan game, and then I'll, I'll get into the Washington yeah. So the game. Michigan game for me, you say all that, which is great, and and I completely makes sense. It still went into overtime, which is crazy. So like you 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 look at Bama, that's that just shows how great of a program Bama is, and how great of a coach Nick Saban oh, is, sure. right? It's yeah. like this is not a great team. But he just took Michigan to 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 OT, and honestly, that Blake Corm run was Fire. ridiculous. You see that jump cut? No, just not the on jump, that, dude, not on that. absolutely. The, the jump cut, the Don't jump say. cut into breaking tackles and turning, and bro, I, like unreal. Like he just took that. I think he broke over time uh, over. the Michigan record with that run. But when you talk, when you talk about Bama and how deep, like good they were, like it wasn't. I would, Bama played good, but it wasn't really like Bama. It was it's not what, what really made the game close was Michigan's special teams was yeah. shitty. Yeah. Literally terrible. Like the punt game, yeah. Bama's punter, when they were going back and forth, yeah. it was all about field position. Right. They missed the field goals, you Correct. know what I'm saying? Yeah. They had missed I think they missed the extra point, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Like special teams really killed Michigan. Yeah, for sure. Oof, that for game sure. could have been over in regulation. Yeah. But exactly. I don't yeah. know. I, mean, I didn't know it was such a lock like you guys thought going into it, because SEC is such a powerhouse. I think there's always a question going on with the the northern schools. Like, are are they bringing as hard as the yeah, yeah. yeah the SEC teams? So I didn't think that S- or Alabama was going to lose. Honestly, I thought that they were going to win. Same way. Yeah. But you said it with conviction. You're like, I knew Michigan was going to win. Knew it. Michi- it, it. What were what were the reasons that gave you such confidence? Again? Just going into the game. First of all, if you want to talk about. You know, betting the line is is like was like a one one and a half something like that. It went down. But Michigan was favored. Exactly. So Michigan's favored against Bama. So now, 
everybody's thinking about that and everybody's like, okay, cool, and I can get my money back off of, off of Bama, right? right. So, <laughs> so yeah. if you put in that perspective, you put that in perspective, and then you also think about how, like I said, Bama's team is made compared to a past Bama yeah, team right. against a top-notch Michigan team where they're pretty much all fastest are hitting right now. Yeah. You, well, the, special, the special teams didn't really hit in the, in the game, but the game, they, offense, defense, special team, they look really solid. So I just had confidence in that, and then the run game, and also Michigan's D-line. And then you're playing for a coach who everybody, yeah. well, in the Michigan world, they feel he got screwed, right? Mm -hmm. So now he's back, and you know they, they think he's going to leave, of course, because of the way he's being treated, and supposedly he's getting recruited by a bunch of NFL teams. But So you're playing for this coach, which sure. just gives you more of that it factor, basically. So. All right, before we move on to the next game, mm -hmm. Georgia hops into that matchup. Who do you think takes it? If Georgia hops in and for plays and Alabama, for Alabama. Ooh, damn. That's a good question. Oh, I'm right. gonna go. Oh shit. <laughs> Which is so sad, though, right? So like, I'm gonna go Georgia. I might have gotta go with Georgia too. It's tough, right? I mean. Yes. And, and they didn't even make it to the Final Four. That, which, that's about, crazy. That, that's a reason why they got to open up to more teams. But I agree with you. I think Georgia wins that game. So, so why are they not in the playoff? Yeah, I agree. So to round out this first game, a couple things. Bama, there was probably no better uh, scene to be set than Alabama, Nick Saban, Jim Harbaugh, and Michigan. And just two hel an, an absolute helmet game. Okay, For the first time probably in Nick Saban's career, other than maybe George the past couple of years, they just got dominated up front. Mm -hmm. Michigan looked like the more physical team from uh, the start of the game and kind of a microcosm for both teams. Michigan won and they won ugly. Mm -hmm. And Alabama had their moments, but they have not been the Alabama that we know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, honestly, Milrow being the athlete who he is, I think he's a better quarterback than people give him credit for. And they went away from the pass game because their line couldn't block for him. Um, yeah, I think the Rose Bowl should be – the national championship game every year. That's yeah. been a topic lately. It has been. But, um, hey, a mid-tier Alabama team, I would take that happily for a Florida Gator team right now. Um, we're yeah. getting close. We're, we're on our way. I don't know about we're that. Not we're, yeah, we're not even close. We're not even close. I'm lying here, close. okay? A, a lying optimism. Um, all right, so let's go to the nightcap. Uh, Washington and Texas, okay. another great game. Yeah. Um, thoughts on this one, I got to start with Washington and talking about Michael Penix. Oof. I... It, I'm, I would be so upset if I was Michael Penix. And, and, and I would hold this on my shoulder for the rest of my career. Like, the fact that he didn't win the fucking I love Heisman. I put that on your left shoulder when you did that. Oh, yeah. Because he's a lefty. The fact that he didn't win the Heisman, he, he has done nothing but amazing things. He, he came from two ACL tears. I saw the whole, the whole thing. Two ACL tears, separated his shoulder. Like, unfucking real And this yeah. is where, this is a prime example of the transfer portal actually being a good thing right like there's a lot of bad transfer portal scenarios where they're leaving all the time and whatever he was able to get another opportunity left his school got another opportunity and just took, took advantage full of advantage of it and yeah. the absolute dots he is throwing on a consistent basis it's Wrong like to like that's Jay, crazy might might been an underdog his whole life like when he was in temple yeah he'd been an underdog yeah and I, and I say this right here, he's the best quarterback in college football For right sure. now. sure, absolutely. Better than anybody by far. Like, And he put that on display oh, versus, versus Texas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the throws, the he, throws was he was making and also the receivers that he has and uh -huh. the O-line, like everything was just put on full display and, and, yeah. it, and it looked great. Yeah, I, I'm rooting for them. I'm not going to lie because I, I just like it's a new team. Yep. He's crushing it. I think he got snubbed with the Heisman. I mean, you give a what? Were they a three loss? I think LSU is a three loss team. Three loss. The only thing, Jaden Daniels was putting up like video game numbers again against like I think Grambling and another you know lower program as far as college football like D one goes. And you got Washington in the Pac twelve gauntlet this year specifically. Yes. Um, you could absolutely undefeated make the, argument the numbers for he was putting up yeah. and. It just it doesn't make sense to me, but I mean they went out, they handled business, and this is the same scenario that you were talking about with with Texas, um, and and Alabama. I mean, if we're being honest, top four teams, I always said I didn't think Texas should be in there. That that was just my my Close point of game. view. Yeah, but at the same time, I, I don't the way Texas has been up and down, and how dominant Georgia has been. It to me, my top four were. Michigan, Washington, Georgia, Bama. I think that was top four teams. I'm so in the happy country. we didn't get to so, two SEC teams, though. So. But 
So now are we sure that Florida State shouldn't have been in the playoff? I think that's pretty apparent. Guaranteed. <laughs> that's a pretty apparent. Yeah. <laughs> you know what Florida State fans were actually saying, though? They're going to get pissed. Is, oh, uh, you can see defense can win games. It's like, yes, your defense could have done no, well. Nobody said but they would have won and I got killed. God destroyed. Yeah. On, Absolutely oh, destroyed. Man. There were a lot of players saying, because I'm – He's an FSU guy. I went to Florida State. <laughs> but clearly, like, when I was fighting the good fight, I knew <laughs> that it would come to this, you know, and it does suck. However, um, you know, I think that if we wouldn't have lost our guy, we would have had a for good sure. chance. Oh, in there. for sure. I would have been interested to see how. Yeah. Who, so if we wouldn't have lost him, we would have played. The backup who wouldn't have transferred. No, no, no. I'm saying, let's Probably say Michigan. our quarterback doesn't oh, go yeah, down. We, we play bad. Michigan. Realistically, realistically, um, yeah, because you uh, sneaked in. You know, it's unfortunate the bowl season's got to get figured out because even with this, you know, Jordan Travis going out, you got Rodemaker transferring. Yeah. Something's got to give in these bowl games to where these guys are opting out, and then yeah, you, you know, saw these Kirby kids Smart. are getting embarrassed on national television. You saw Kirby yeah. what he said after the game. Yes, and so that was going. I think well, that was one of the best quarterback games I've ever seen mm-hmm. by a college guy with Penix uh, delivery. Touch on the ball, zip when he has to, placement of the ball. Um, I agree. I think Caleb started out the season just based off of last season being the best quarterback coming in, but yep. I think Penix has what's, taken his spot. What's with lefty quarterbacks, and why in our brain does it look weird when they throw the ball? Because I don't know if you've ever seen. They took they took Tua and flipped him to, to a righty, mirrored his, his image yeah. to righty. It looks beautiful. <laughs> like, the, uh. the, the, the throwing motion is gorgeous. It's exactly what, like... It's so good, and then you flip them lefty, and it's it's kind of weird. Yeah, it just because like. our brains are used to seeing a right yeah, quarter, right-handed kinda, quarterback, so yeah. then we see a lefty, it's kind of just look weird. It's right different there. catching it too, you know. It does. It, it tells differently. Yes, for you're sure. right. You're yes. right. You're right. For sure. Tim Tebow really he held it down. <laughs> right, he did. No, he did. <laughs> he he was hard down, catching it did. because it didn't always come in a. See, tight. he didn't look weird to me though. He was so dominant. Like he was very like tomahawk shot, which was is ironic. Tebow, I ain't gonna lie. Tebow's we'll arm motion was <laughs> so weird to me. I ain't gonna lie. You crap. committed and I hit you with it. God, he dropped down say. all the way. Here. Dropped it all the way down. He gonna wind it up and yep, it, it's yep. crazy. But then he might run you over the next play. Yeah. You feel me? Um, I almost wore Tebow jersey too, but we'll uh, save that. Best left hand quarterback all time. Steve Young. That was quick. Yeah. I mean, are we talking NFL? Or, are we ooh. talking college? I love Michael Vick too, but. Are we talking NFL? I was about, or college, to, say, I was about so. to say probably Mike Vick. Yeah. Steve Young is up there too. But if we're going college, you got. I think you go oh, Tebow. Oh, Tebow. Tebow. Yeah, Easily. Yeah, not even yeah. a debate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not even a debate. The yeah. only other lefty, uh, I mean, obviously, two has got a case. I, you know, we grew up. How old are you? 25. Okay. So, Matt Liner, to me. Like he was in college, the, you're in saying. College, yes, he yes, was yes, the yes, first yes, one. yes, yes. Um, I remember watching the. I remember watching Matt Liner and Reggie Bush. USC and, was so yeah, the, USC so was fun, and they were so freaking good, man. That was yeah. one of the better teams. Reggie Bush was very fun to watch. Yeah, he was. And oh, talking about this, the NIL, just real quick. Every, I see this on on social media all the time. It's like they took Reggie Bush's Heisman away from him, but you got guys rolling up in fucking you saw that Lamborghinis and they got, they got penthouses. <laughs> they got, floors. Oh, the penthouse, Caleb Williams. That's what it was. Come Caleb on, Williams had this penthouse. Ridiculous. By the way, I'm gonna go on record with Caleb Williams. I think he's gonna be a huge bust. I'm really? just saying. I just think he is. I, I don't know. I don't there. like his character from everything okay. that I've heard, from from seeing how he handles situations. I just do not like it. I think it's he's a, a little age, full of himself, too much sure. already, and he hasn't gotten to the point where he can be. I don't know. So, and I could be just you know. I don't know the guy, of course, right? So I could be just buying into all the bullshit on the internet, but... 19-year-old kid, I guarantee you when he gets punched in the mouth in the NFL, it's either going to make him or break him. Yeah. He's either got the chance to be elite or, like you said, he could be a bust real quick. Yeah. So. Um, okay, so real quick pickings for this national championship game. Okay. I want to ask you something. Uh, um, we'll start with you. Washington and Michigan, Monday night. Who you got? I'm going to go Michigan. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you have Michigan has all the momentum. They have the it. They're the number one. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm just. You're kidding. Like <laughs> um, you. You know, everything's pointing to Michigan. But fuck, I like Michael Penix. Penix, man, I yeah. really do. Uh, Penix. <laughs> Penix. <laughs> That's um, a real right there. You there. Go. I love him, man. And I, 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 I got, I'm gonna go Washington. Wow. Go Washington. Okay. No, I gotta go with Jet from Tampa. Yeah, I go yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. love, I love Mike and I love Washington. I'm putting it right now. Washington gonna win that game. Yeah, I'm tell you. there we go. 
Okay, I think Washington has the best player in this game. Michigan has the best team. And the only reason I say that is because physically wise, Michigan has just been who they are all year. Mm -hmm. They won last week and they didn't look good really. Mm -hmm. And they still dominated in the trenches yeah. against a very well coached, whether it's mid, lower tier, or one of their better teams. Uh, Alabama coach Nick Saban team. Yeah. Um, I want Washington to win more than Michigan, I promise you. But if I was a betting man, Here which my track record probably should tell me to get Washington, but I would have to go Michigan in this okay. game. All right. So I think it's going to be a close one. I think you so got. So when you say you're going to take Michigan, would you take them with the points? What is the spread again? I think it's four. I think it's four right now. I like Washington because I don't, mm, other than maybe. Ohio State to a very lesser degree. Big Ten offense this year, very mid, like very, yeah. very suspect. So this is by far the best uh, offense that Michigan will play. And on the contrary, this is the best defense that Washington will play yeah. all year. So stylistically, this is a prize fight. This will be the best uh, championship game we could have asked for, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, cannot wait for it. I hate that it's on Monday night. Hopefully in the near future, we can get it on Saturday night uh, for the college football junkies out there. Um, all right, let's shift for a second. So, you're your guest here. Mm -hmm. You're welcome here anytime because I love the pushback already that you give Jake. No, for sure. um, <laughs> so, what's going on with you? You are playing football? Yeah. Well, Tell us a little bit about what you got going on. So, the past two and a half years, I was in the CFL. I played for the Montreal Alouettes. I played for the Edmonton Elks. Nice. Love my time there. I love Canada. I love living there. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a great time. Yeah. You go to the CFL, like, to them, you're, like, in the NFL. Yeah. So depending on which city you're in, you're going to be treated really good. Nice. So yeah. I really love my time in the CFL. Right now, I'm in between stages. I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to go to next. Gotcha. So right now, I'm just figuring that out and then so, talking about the CFL. So, so Darius is a local guy. Um, you went to Osceola first, right? Yeah, I okay. went to Osceola for one year. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. 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 I went, really? I went, I went there for one year. For one year. Now, yeah. I didn't know him then. I knew him when he went to Northside. Yeah. Which... He does it for the private school, young, the smaller, the got smaller, to. you know, <laughs> got group. Got to do it for the private school. Because man, uh, yeah. So we we met each other training at overtime athletes okay. with Chris Barnard, and mm -hmm. who is dope. We all know that. Um, so. Do you still Chris. train? Do you still train with Chris? Every every time I come back to the crib, I'm going straight to Chris. Every Chris time. Barnard, You're best right. best trainer in the world. I'm trying yep. to tell y'all. Yeah. Speed, okay. strength, power, all of it. Um, you know, he trains all the pros and. Darius and I met when we were I was training one uh, mm -hmm. summer and you were still in high school right mm -hmm. and then we went out to the field got some DB drills no, in so. which was good and um, oh, yeah. but then he so Darius went and ended up going to Carson Newman right yes sir talk about the record setting season that you had I think it was sophomore year yeah I think it was my sophomore year that was my uh, all American year yes uh, I forget maybe I had like five picks it was a while ago maybe yeah like five picks. Uh, a lot of TFLs, a lot yeah. of PBUs, yeah. just flying around the field. That kind of that kind of puts you on the map in the Division Two world, right? It, Where it's that, just that's, like, a, that's exactly what yeah, it is. Yeah. So then that year kind of put me on the map. Then like scouts coming in, yeah. junior year, pretty good year. You know what I'm saying? Had that year. I think it was like all sack, all region, or something like that. Then uh, senior year comes in, all sack, all region. Probably one of my best years. Senior. Yeah, led like the team in tackles, top in tackles, production points, and then like you, like coming from a Division two school, like mm -hmm. you know, like not a lot of scouts come. Right. You you see senior year, like you'll you'll walk out the facility, you see a bunch of like NFL teams out like looking, and it wasn't just for me. Like we had Antonio Wimbers, like mm -hmm. Desmond Farrell, mm -hmm. Phil McDowell, like that's like De like Derek. We had like a lot of players from that team that could really like potentially like play professionally. Yeah. So like we had scouts coming in talking to a, like a, a bunch of us, and then like uh, so I think it was like the the last game before my senior year, the the day before I get invited to the East West Shrine game, which nice. is probably probably literally like yeah. we grew up watching that game because yeah, it's, it's, it's at the crib, you know yep. what I'm saying? Yep. So like that was like my dream to like play play in and like go there. And like the day, like day before I get the invitation, I'm like talking to my parents, I'm like yeah, like let's go. Yeah. And then like the now next you're game, playing in it. Yeah. And yeah. Then, exactly. And then the next game, 
I had the next day we had the game. I had a great game, bro. Like I was going crazy. Like right before and then like right before halftime, it's like a so I'm, I'm on the edge, right? I'm about, I'm blitzing off the well, I was, it wasn't a blitz, like you know, like when you're on the edge yep. and like you're just you holding see, that. You see a play action pat, you yep. see a you see a play action, you see the run, you like you like fucking I'm finna go make that play, mm -hmm. I'm finna go get the TFL. Yeah. So I do that, it turns to be a turns out to be a play action, you know, like the play action. Yeah. They come back. They come back the other way. Boot. So they come back. Boot with the tight end. So I'm like, oh fuck. Let me get back to my drop to go get there. And I do that. And then my my fucking knee just goes uh, out, bro. Uh, like you can happened? see, you can see it right here. So wow. Like literally, like nobody touched me. Like I'm coming downhill full speed. Like in like I do all the time. Like coming yeah. downhill. And you just change direction, to go, and come back. To, exactly. Yeah. Change direction to come back, and it just gave out, bro. Like, Something you've done a million times, right? Li Absolutely. Literally, bro. Like and and I look back at it like everything happens for a reason. God has a plan for for a reason. Like I, I I talk I talk about this all the time to everybody. Like it, it like I go down, change direction, and gave out on me. It was crazy. Like. Then like I mean I still went to the East West Shrine game. I talked to a bunch of scouts, but obviously like play, when you're a Division yeah. Two player and you didn't play, like you yeah. like doesn't really like help yeah. anything. So then that happened. The whole process happened. Then uh, after that, pretty much just went straight but to the CFL. Good for you though. I mean, so you tore your ACL last game of the season, mm -hmm. senior year. Mm -hmm. Most people, that's brutal. You're done, no, right? Especially so. Division Two, right? Like most people, it's like all right. Well, you're yeah. you're probably not gonna play professional ball, right? You came back. Worked through it. Got Spe an speaking of, I want to shout out Exos in Frisco, Texas. Okay. They got my knee back. Like, let's it was, go. Like it wasn't nothing, bro. Yeah. Like, I, like you'll go in there with with the draft prep. You'll get in there like eight. It's really a nine to five. You go in yeah. there and you go in there eight. <laughs> and you brutal. literally like you training and like you yeah. doing all this machine work on the knee. Like my whole body, like they they really got me right. So no, shout out to them. Got they it got down to back. science and got you. So I got a couple yeah. things for you. One's a quick hitter. The other one you can elaborate on. Mm -hmm. uh, Jake, um, with his playing style, he likes to mirror after John Lynch. Mm -hmm. I'm, that's what I'm going off of our conversation. Kind of. Man, I who, know what you about to ask me. Who do you? Mirror, who do you look to and be I like, could, I want to play like him, or I feel like I play Or you have the same style, right? And I, and I say this because this is my favorite player ever. All my homeboys, like my cousins, like they know who I'm about to say. I don't want y'all to put like the highlights I, while I'm saying this right now. I, I mean, I, do you, can you I have guess? a guess? Yeah, Tyron Matthew. No, that's oh, not it. Oh, damn it. You have, anybody else have it? Oh, let me let me get some hints. All right, Hold cool. on, hold on. Yeah, give me some. Uh, I haven't seen you he's play, a, so it'd be hard. So he's a old, like, I want to say like older, like, it's back in the day. Okay. You say um, safety? He's under, he's under 5'10". Oh. Wait, he wait, plays wait, safety. Wait, wait, wait. Troy, Palomalo. No. Ah. Uh, uh, he's a sleeper. No, Brian Dawkins is pretty tall. Is Un he? Under five ten, he had injury problems. He had injury problems. I'm trying to give you a good hand without giving it away. I know. You said older? Older. No, no, like back in the day. So yeah, like, yeah. When like we when were, we were, we were back in the we day. We were Jets. We were watching them. We were okay, watching. Okay, okay. So, yeah. so John Lynch era, basically. I mean, right. pretty um, much. Pretty yeah, much. Like, it was John Lynch era. You said he's under five ten. Under five ten. He uh, has. He got. He has dreads. Oh, hold on, hold he on. Has oh, oh, I'm Bob Sanders. Bob Sanders. Yo, no. I Bob Sanders. Let the highlights right now. Okay. I want you to put my highlights. Then put his highlights right here. <laughs> that. That's your. If job. I had a mimic Bob somebody, Sanders. it would be Bob, Bob Sanders. Sanders. Like, Dude, five, back in the day. He's five, yes. five nine, probably like two hundred pounds, and yes. he's gonna come down and smack some. Yes. And he gonna play like sideline to sideline. He's Literally all over the field Bob making plays. Sanders. Like that's literally who I, I like. Was saying. He did have injury dress, problems. I knew exactly you were talking. Yeah. He, did, he did have injury problems. I think he was messing. Yeah, he, he had, had injury his... problems. And I and I had this conversation with my homeboys. I'm like, bro, like, I mean, obviously, if ends a bust, like, it shit happens. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But like, if if he didn't have injury problems, he yeah. would be one of the one best of the safeties. Most underrated yeah. safeties. Bro, nobody ever thinks about him yeah. because of his injury problems. And yeah. like, it, he was just throwing his body around. and He's little as hell. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But okay. like, he's. Go ahead. So my bad, my bad. I didn't no, mean to cut right. you off. So Bob Sanders, that's mm -hmm. a great one. Yes. So a little bit of elaboration on this next one. You injured your knee. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously that, you know, can deter someone from trying to continue to what they want to do and what they love to do. No, for sure. So what is like, I mean, I didn't play collegiate nor, you know, any other thing other than high school football. I had shoulder issues. I still <laughs> struggle to this day. <laughs> But for you and like mindset to kind of rehab and get your mental to a place where I still want to do this and I still enjoy doing this. So how can I go about getting back to where I was, if not better? No, What's your mindset so, and how do you feel about the process? So like, like when it happened, I'm just like, 
I'm just like, damn, bro. Like, I may not play football ever again. Cause like, bro, I'm at a D2 school, bro. Like, who is finna wanna come and get mm -hmm. me? And I'm hurt right now. So like I'm like, I'm in my apartment, like when I'm in college, I'm like, bro, like, I'm just sitting here praying, like, God, like, what what do you what, what do you want me to do? Like, I know like everything happens for a reason. So I just did the rehab, even like even in this and even the same process, like before, and this is this is the business of football. So like mm -hmm. before people before the world knew I had an injury, like agents are calling like my phone like every day, mm -hmm. like trying to like mm -hmm. be like represent me. So they're like, yeah, like okay, sick. division two school, like okay, let, let's get him. Like he's a he's like a small guy, like and then he's gonna go to the league and then he's gonna be like this, this, that, and that. And then like right when they hear about the injury, it's like, like oh. Yeah, like they're like, oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like they're guaranteeing you all this money they're gonna pay you, and they're like, oh yeah, like well maybe they start I... to retreat a little bit. Exactly, which yeah. is the business of football. Like at the time when yeah. I was young, like was that like 20 years old, 21? Like I didn't really know nothing about the business of football, like how I know now. Like yeah. it's it's cutthroat. Fo professional football is cutthroat. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? So like I had the like I had a good agent that took me on. He he brought me. So Frisco paid for everything, paid for EXOs, like That's awesome. great guy. Good on him. Great great guy. So um he took he took me in and then like uh I just wake up every day, go to rehab, be with the be with the guys, you know what I'm saying? Like be with that like helps out. Exactly. Like and I'm from a D two school being with guys from like SEC, ACC, like like every day is kind of just like that's when you motivates can, you, you know what I'm saying? No and, doubt. Even training with those guys too. Exactly. Cause then you. cause then, like even with the injury, like even if I'm lifting upper body, like like I'm better than majority right. of these guys, like you right. know what I'm saying? So like right. that just gave me like the energy, okay, like now I know I can play and then you all about to say you gotta yeah. say something. So yeah. how long after you rehabbed mm -hmm. Till you kind of knew you were gonna get a shot in the CFL. So uh, it took me maybe like ten to with EXOs they got me back right really quick. Maybe like ten to eleven months before I was like fully back. Okay. And then maybe like uh, a year before I was like ready to play. So play. you still had to you still yeah. had a year of after of training. Yeah. So I had a so like when I that happened, then I had the the draft happen, then I had like that off time. I took like a, it was like maybe like half a year off to like rehab and make sure I was like right to play. Wait, what draft? What do you mean? The, draft? the NFL draft. So that was okay. like the 2020 got NFL it. draft. Got it. That got was it. that was when that happened. Yeah. So then after that, I rehabbed and everything, got that back right, and then that's when uh, I knew I was ready to play for the CFL. And then I um, I talked. My agent now is who the, the person who got me into the CFL. Kenny Kim, he got me into the CFL. So uh, then he's like, all right, cool. Like he's like. Like I know you can play. Like I get you. I get you a contract. Like, like going into the CFL, like it's hard to get into. It's it's kind of hard, but it's not like you get into it. But like it's a ninety man roster to get into the CFL. Like, eight teams is like got a it. like a ninety man roster. Like you gotta like get on to like the feel. exactly. So you want to get on the team and then you want to make the team. Got so it. it's like all right, bet. He's like I get you on the team. What you do on the field is up to you. Dictates, yeah. So like I go to Edmonton, my uh, rookie year. Uh, was Wilder there at that point in time? Exactly, James Wilder. That's my dog. Yeah, he was over there. So he he played at Plant with him. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know James. He's doing the well. He's at. He's, was it? He like training and coaching. He's a head right coach now? now. Yeah, head coach at Chamberlain. Yeah. He's a great yeah. guy. Shout out James, man. Yeah. So uh, I, I met James at FSU back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Late night. I was I was over there at uh, Edmonton rookie year. Uh, go in. I'm like third, fourth string. Like you know, like you go into like a pro football. Like yeah. you, you, you're like the last, like yep. bottom of the body. You gotta work your way up. Like they even got like the rookies in like a whole like like the ref, <laughs> the ref, the ref locker room. Uh, That's where they keep the rookies shit. at because they know like rookies are gonna get cut like yeah, this. Yeah. And like it's crazy going to CFL. Like you pack all your stuff. You got your passport. You go up there. You get cut. You sent right back to the crib. Like next day, <laughs> they got they got your flight ready. You yeah. you, you gone. Yeah. So I'm like I'm a, I'm over there rookie year. I'm playing. I'm playing like, uh, well, so in CFL, you're like corner, halfback. Yeah. Sam is like a strong safety type. And then you got like the free safety, halfback, corner. I'm pretty much playing like everywhere in the secondary. And then like I'm making plays. And like we, have, we didn't have preseason games because at that time we had COVID. Wow. So we didn't have any preseason games. So we had like a last final scrimmage before like the first uh, regular season game. And then like uh, I'm playing like really I'm playing like really good as fuck. Like yeah. I'm out there making plays, like covering everybody. And then uh, like the last one of the last plays of the game, they throw like a uh, like an out, and then like I'm reading it, I go and pick it off, and I can see the GM like in, in like in the corner, he like uh, he like yeah yeah like yeah. he like yeah okay that boy that boy did that, yeah. I'm like yeah yeah I did do that, yeah, yeah, so yeah. then uh, that happened, and then then I ended up starting my uh, the regular season, yeah. I started Sam, 
So then ever since then, like, I was playing I was playing in Edmonton. And then I don't know if we want to go anywhere else from there. Yeah, no. So th- I, I have a question about the CFL. So yeah. the, the, like, hot topic in the CFL is this fucking onside punt, okay? So... Oh, that's how, crazy. How, is, that's crazy. how weird is that? Like, is that fucking weird? It's, it's crazy because, like, I'm out the, the the time they did that, I wasn't on Montreal. So then I'm watching it on TV. My, yeah. my dog uh, Antwi did it and my dog Cole did Those it. There's the receivers that did it? So yeah, so it. Cole's 17 receiver and the Antwi's running back 20, he did it. Can we explain Explain it? the rules f- for the people who All don't right. know, including All right, us. perfect. So the CFL football. We're talking about the onside punt, the right? onside punt, yes. All right, cool. So... When you punt the ball in the CFL, if you're behind the person who's punting the ball, you can you're actually eligible to get the ball and reset the downs. No matter how far they punt it. No matter how far it you punt it. It has to go past the line of scrimmage. It has to go past the line. No, the person who's no. punting it has to be behind the line of scrimmage, and the ball has to go past the line of scrimmage. And then he can go get it. So exactly. So not like a full ten yards on an onside. No. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Okay. So so you just have to start lined up behind the punter. Exactly. So like say like the line of scrimmage is this line right here. If right. I'm the punter right here and I punt the ball and it goes literally one yard in front of the line of and scrimmage, then you, I you can go can pick up and recover it. The football. Well, so that's it, that's literally a good way to. Listen. So yeah, that's what they. Were, so I saw the video and I was like, okay. So the quarterback threw the ball to the receiver uh-huh. right before yeah, the line yeah, of scrimmage, yeah, that's right. I'm a and dog. then he <laughs> kicks it past the line of scrimmage, and then clearly you're doing it on off coverage, right? Where Okay, there's it's third and fucking fifteen. Mm-hmm. The DBs are not going to be pressed. Exactly, so they he just all, everybody kicks all. it and then and gets it's, it. It's and crazy. it's crazy because like nobody really thought about that. Like defensive no. players no, didn't really think about that. But like I bet like now in the CFL like next year, they change like third and fifteen. You're probably going to have at least one person on each side on the line of scrimmage to keep that to, from to happening. keep that from happening because that's literally like the easiest way to reset. You the know what that reminds me of Jake? What? That's like defense is trying to adjust to Steph Curry when he takes. Oh over. my you know what I mean? God! Um, we did see, not just Steph Curry. Um, <laughs> so uh, real quick, one question, and then um, let's. Uh, I've I've more uh, before. We, I okay, okay. Jake, too, just yeah. on that. Mm-hmm. Is that cool or is it not cool? Like, do you like that? So uh, a lot, a lot of the Canadians love it because, like, like the CFL, they have their own rule that makes them different from the NFL. So, like, for sure, they love like Canadian like fans. They love like their different rules and like uh, me personally. I mean, it's cool. Like, I mean, the CFL is different. Like, yeah. it's just a different ball game. So, like, er- they have different rules. That's a, that's a different rule. Like, you gotta abide by it and and you gotta figure out a way to defend it. Yeah. You gotta figure out a way to do it. So. It is what it so is. that's why the fans like it because it makes it their own sport. Yes. Exactly, that's literally. Okay. That's, but that's the mindset though is, is is awesome. Like that's the positive mindset to have. Because the other way is like, you're you're busting your ass as a defensive player. Mm-hmm. You're you're getting them to third and long. You're mm-hmm. like, let's go, money down, getting off the field, and then they do this bullshit and get a first I'll, down. And it's I've like, never <laughs> had that happen to me, but I would be pissed. I ain't gonna lie, yeah. bro. Like, in game, crazy. right? So I mean, like, but like, it's so crazy. Like, it's, like you said, like you yeah. working all, like all these down, like if you a home team, like the stadium going crazy. crazy. 30,000 people going crazy right now screaming and then they get a third and 15 hours quiet Yeah, as fuck. it's quiet. Like, third and 15, they just fucking kick so the ball So it right. seems like that's a huge potential offensive advantage, right? Huge. Absolutely. Is there anything equivalent like that on defense in the CFL? Probably not. Well, I, isn't the, the CFL, CFL an is offensive game man what bro you can't even touch the receiver yes. like, if you like so like when they when they all go in motion it's called a waggle yeah you can't even touch the receivers like you you jab him right here like 10 yards down the field they're gonna call it and it's a first down and they have game. someone can move forward on, on everybody snap, everybody right? who's eligible can move Boom. forward full speed yeah so remember a couple weeks back i told you i said um i think it was cd lamb i felt bad for the db that was guarding cd lamb yeah because he ran a he, he, they motioned him, mm-hmm. and then he creeped t- forward to the line of scrimmage as he was motioning, which is illegal in the NFL. You yeah, have yeah to you stay, can't go forward you in, have to in stay, American football. Yeah, you have to stay parallel. Mm-hmm. He creeped forward. They didn't call it. So C.D. Lamb was running full speed forward at this DB on off coverage. Mm-hmm. You're not going to win. C.D. Yeah. Lamb's going to do you up. He yeah. did a little post corner, a little stick in corner, wide the fuck up, and I felt so bad. That is what the CFL has to deal with full speed all the fucking time. Speaking, They're running around. Like, yes. you, you have to get set. Like, I just crazy. Speaking of, speaking of, shout out to all my dogs, all the CFL DBs out there. Like, and in my personal opinion, y'all, like, CFL DBs are, are underpaid because, like, it's literally the Way hardest harder. thing to do. Like, 
I know so many people that can cover that waggle like it ain't nothing, and it's, it's crazy. It's hard, bro. Like, yeah. it, you gotta read the tempo. Uh -huh. You gotta know the sticks. You gotta know the down and distance. You gotta know yeah. like film work. Like, it's a hard thing to do to cover that waggle. So shout out to the CFL. So yes, it, it is an offensive game wow. for, sure. for sure. But that's gotta been great preparation. To, sure. If you do take a step back or yeah. into a, a new domain, you don't have to deal with that, yeah. right? You, right. It, you feel me? Absolutely. Like, yeah, like it's 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 different. Like American and CFL football is it's a whole it's a whole different ball game. Could you imagine being a fan on that team who gets that ridiculous punt against them? I would lose my mind. Yeah, the, the bro, fans, the fans, the fans will probably go crazy, yeah. bro. Like and like like stuff like that will happen, and then like you'll go to the you'll go to the bar late, later that night, and they'll be on TSN playing it. TSN is ESPN up there, so they'll, oh, okay. be, they'll be playing that all night. All night, yeah. Really? <laughs> yes. So I wanted I wanted yeah. to run back to college real quick because mm -hmm. um, you know, we didn't really talk about your Carson Newman days. Well, we did a little bit, but I wanted to mention, dude, I was so bummed. There was an opportunity one year that mm -hmm. you were there. I think it was my senior year. We we could have been able to play each other because so Carson oh, yeah, Newman's yeah, yeah, D2. Yeah. The, the way D2 works is it's super region. Um, that's the top seven super region end up going to the playoffs, and they play each other, and each super region ends up coming together it's it's actually a really good playoff system by the way which is what i think yeah no, d1 needs but um at carson newman what was it like because i was always wanting to play against you but then mm -hmm. for people that don't know carson newman was a was What's a, the mascot of carson newman eagles, eagles. okay sick. they they were a triple option team right mm -hmm. we, you so i always wanted to play against you but then i we, we played uh shorter every single year triple option it's the most annoying fucking thing from a defensive perspective most mm -hmm. annoying thing to go up against triple option team you so, change your whole defense you don't play your defense at all it's yeah. completely oh, no, different you definitely play your defense. no completely different jack we called ours jack king like it was just some weird shit anyway mm -hmm. so but i didn't want to play you simply because i hate playing against but what was it like playing defense on an offensive team that did triple option is it any different like, you mean like practicing, practicing against them both. So practicing against them, and then just maybe the the tempo of the game and stuff like that. Is it? Oh, you mean like transitioning from like that offense to like a shotgun? Team? Sure. Or I mean, in Northside you didn't run that, right? So yeah. you were you were used to a normal offense, and then now all of a sudden practice tough. Practice yeah. is weird. I you're mean, going like that. for for practice purposes, like uh, it's different because like you're in the games you're playing a shotgun team, right? Like, you're they're gonna spread you out. You gonna go too high. Like it's gonna be a regular defense. Like um, when you're playing Carson Newman. We had we had a play called Slide Two Outlaw. Like it would okay. be like the play we would run against, like our team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We wouldn't run nothing though. We probably run that the whole time unless it would be like third and long. Interesting. So like Slide Two Outlaw. Like and when you're playing against like a team like Carson Newman, you gotta have two overhangs, two uh -huh. force the ball. Uh -huh. So Coach Slay, Larry Slay, literally taught me everything I need to know about defense. Like, like awesome. when when I eventually become a coach like he taught me a lot of stuff that i'm gonna in entail into a lot of people so yeah. slide to outlaw you got two overhangs and then you they force the ball so in football and any type of football you need a force player you need a plug player and you need a cutback player so the plug player is is the person that's running inside out on the ball so the ball is coming this way yeah. he's running inside out on the uh on the inside hip mm -hmm. the force player is the person that's forcing the ball also you need a spill player mm -hmm. so force spill plug Cut back. Mm. The spill player is the person when there's a lead block, you always want the running back to bounce it. You never want it to hit upfield because it hits spill upfield. Out. Exactly. You yeah. want him to spill outside. So the person that's coming downhill, he's spilling the block for it to bounce. Mm -hmm. And then when it bounces, you have a force player so he so it doesn't break contain. Yeah. And then once it doesn't break contain, you have the plug player running inside out on the yeah. ball. He's running inside out. And then if just in case if he misses a play, you have the cutback player. Yeah. So when whenever you watch any type of NFL, CFL, high school, literally, it doesn't matter what it is. If if the defense does that on a run play, yeah. he should be getting more than two yards. Yeah, for sure. Every time, like mm. I watch football every day to this day, and I'm looking at that, yeah. and I'm looking at that, and that's if they do execute that per perfectly, yeah. it is. True. You won't get so you guys. Yards. So in practice, you guys used to have to run this defense, but of course, leading up to games, and even I'm sure. Uh, well before games, you had scout teams that were running normal oh, offenses so. and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So you didn't have to really worry about that. It's just so interesting to me because I hated playing against those guys. <laughs> last, last high school game I ever played at Plant, we were playing the Superdome, mm -hmm. and it was against, I think, John Curtis, I believe. And they were a triple option team, man. And they were like a private school, and they've been playing together since like the second grade. Yeah. 
So I got a concussion. That was like my yeah. third one after that. Dude, I, I bet blacked you did, I out. I bet you did get a concussion that game. <laughs> it, was <on> a punt. <laughs> it was on a punt. Oh, oh yeah, man. I hit and I didn't even get hit. I hit someone and just like lights out. Yeah, it was bad. But stuff. we were getting torn up by this triple option, man. Like they they just knew after playing this triple option for 10 years, like yeah. they started when they were so young and they had some studs on that team too. Some of the best high school teams do run triple option. Uh, Jackson, what's the Jackson, uh, they're another team that does the Jesuits closer. I think they were running triple option for a little how while. How close would you say? Uh, CP High was doing it for a little while well, too. Well, we ran the wing team. Wing, same, but like how same similar, we, much, same, it's same thing? same thing. Almost, almost. Okay. Well, like, well, there's variations. Literally, well, when you're talking about details, it's very different, but like, yes. kind of like, you know what I'm saying, the motion and stuff is kind of the same. And as you're speaking, too, for the casual football fans out there, it is way more complex yeah. than what you think about just getting <laughs> yeah. on the field and go hitting each other. Right. Uh, a lot of strategy, obviously a lot of uh, intricate details and in mm -hmm. where players are supposed to be to make the play happen. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so real quick, and then if you guys have anything else okay. for uh, – your football career, I want to ask too, just as far as like mindset, uh, real quick, like injury, like bounce back, if you have any advice for uh, young kids getting into football who are maybe going through some stuff or, you know, people uh, a little bit older, mm -hmm. but your age, you know, coming back from injury, trying to get back in the swing yeah, of things, so. uh, any advice? Um, so all the all the jits out there. Because really, real quick, sorry, you took a year and a half off before you got back? Basically. Pretty much like a year. That's like not easy to do. Yeah. It's not. It's, it's it's really about how bad do you want it. Just like anything in life. Like my pops taught me that. Like, how bad do you want things? Like, if you want something bad enough, like think about it. Like, if you out in a jungle and you hungry as hell and you need and you have nothing, you need you to go, go get go some hunt. food. You gonna go. You gonna go make something shake and go and go hunt and go get that. Yeah. yeah. So it's really all. That's all life is about. Like, if you want something bad enough, you're gonna work hard enough to go get that. So. Yeah. It's like some people will be like playing football, like man, like um, it's like football not for everybody. Yeah, no. Especially pro football, it's not. It's like, some some of the really good football players isn't. They don't even care that much, right? So literally, like, that's like, crazy. Literally, like so, some people do it for money. Some people do it for the love of the game. Yeah. Whatever you're doing it for, just like just make sure you're focused on that, so you can go and get that. So mm -hmm. like. If it's maybe some people play pro football because they like the money, you know what I'm saying? It's good. So yeah. they play for that. Some people love the game. Whatever you some people do it for their family. Like whatever you're doing it for, I would probably say focus on that and then that'll help you get to where you want to get to. Cause like anything in life, if you don't work, if you don't want it bad enough, you're not gonna work hard yeah. enough to go get it. Yeah. I, I need you to talk to my little brother. He's getting recruited right now by some schools. Yeah. And um you know, I won't go into too much detail, but he's having a tough time picking and deciding what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. He's 18, and um, he has options. He's got options, which that's mm -hmm. great. You always want options. Hell yeah. Um, so you know, that's another sidebar, but mm -hmm. that's good because uh, I would say entirety of the injury with the comeback story, perseverance is a real thing. You know, put it in a little bit of time. You got faith in what you're doing. That's you got to believe it, and the people in your corner is what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. that you got the support. Um, don't give up. Don't give up. With the injury in mind, I wanted to ask, what's the daily training regimen look like? I want to hear the diet too. And I also wanted to know, is your rehab process still embedded into your daily workout routine? So like you're like the rehab, like my daily process. Yeah, the full workout process, and, and do, do you, you do have to put extra right effort no, into... I don't do nothing for So it. it's good. Right you're, now, this is like... This leg is stronger than this leg. Yeah, wow. So no, like no. when you when you take like tear ACL, like... The doctors tell you like before, like you're probably gonna come back better and faster. Really? Cause like when think about it, like when you're doing rehab for like an ACL, like you're literally working that muscle all day. Yeah, and then yeah. while you're working this muscle, you have to work this muscle too, so they can even out. Yeah. Right. So then like you're work like they'll give you like a band and like a band to like strengthen it. Mm -hmm. And while you're doing the exercise, it's hell. Like you gotta do that. Yeah. And you're working that you're working muscles that you don't usually work if you didn't have the injury. True. So then you, when you have that when you have That's that happen, point. then you come back. And you, your full speed, you come back faster and you're stronger too. Yeah. So to go to your question, uh, when I was at when I was at EXOS, I'd probably wake up at like uh, 7 30, 8 o'clock, uh, drive to the facility. The facility is probably like 10 minutes away. Drive there, uh, check in, height, weight, uh, go to the uh, kitchen. They got like uh, smoothies with like your name on it and like Oof. 
stuff right. and all that. Like you gotta take pills and stuff. Like I don't even know what the pills are. Like you just you pop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know what you're popping. Turned out all right. Hopefully you're okay. You, you, you pop. You pop them. You know what I'm saying? You take it. Trust. You drink. You drink your <laughs> smoothie. Uh, they got breakfast right there uh, for you. Like everybody nice. has individual breakfast. Some people gotta gain weight. Some people gotta lose weight. Yeah. So it's all different. You do that. Um, me, I would go to the uh, to the training room. They, we would do like, I'd be in there for like two hours, like do different type of exercises and stuff. And then uh, I'd probably take like a lunch break and then I get like a massage or like they'll do something around my knee, around that area. And then I'd probably get in the pool. They got a pool, like you do pool exercises cool. with like the knee, like yeah. rehab and stuff. You do that, shower, get back right, maybe take like another like 30 minute break. You got a 30 minute break. And then, um, then you're going back in, then you got to like lift upper body because you still have to be strong for that you're lifting there yeah. and then um after that you'll probably hit the field and do like it depends where you are in the stages of the rehab so yeah. where, what you're doing but you do like maybe like some different drills like compared to your position and then after that I do like contrast and, and then like like hop, have hot tub and cold tubs contrast mm -hmm. norma tech uh do the norma tech too uh, What's the Norma Tech again? The Norma Tech are the the leg, the leg things, yeah. So, oh yeah, those are sick. Yeah. So like, I always want to do those actually. <laughs> pretty much everything you need yeah. to to work out or train exos guys. What's your What's your regimen like leading up to? Because so you just go to Chris, right? For the mm -hmm. most part, you just go to. Overtime. Well, I do Chris, and then I'll do some field work. On you do own. you go to the field, so you do a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of your regimen every day for pretty, leading pretty up to. Pretty much like so, I do Chris. Do field work with a lot of the guys that are also playing professional football. Right. We'd hit the field. Uh, trainer Flo, he helps me out too. So uh, pretty much that, like, when you're in professional football, like, you pretty much know what to do. And, like, yeah, you just okay. get your workout in. You go to the field. You get it done. And then you just go about your day do what you got to do. And then to his point, what's what's the diet looking like? How 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 Right now? How, mm -hmm. how <laughs> regiment are you about your diet? To be honest, I, I don't know what it is, but, like, like I, I eat healthy, but like I'll have like ice cream or like cookies, like damn near like every Smart day, style. bro. Like, and like I don't know, maybe it might you got be a meta good metabolism. That's that's what I was thinking. It might be, it might be the metabolism or yeah, something, but like yeah. I don't know. Like I eat like I mean what last kind of ice cream. Uh, <laughs> maybe like, it depends. Like it could be like Oreo. It could be like Americone Dream from uh, yeah, Ben and Jerry's. Ben and Jerry's, yeah, yeah. Go, That go crazy. I'll go to Yogurtology. Um, uh, I, I love Yogurtology. I used to work there. Yeah, yeah, like, oh, really? I, I, I used to do, be a Yogurtologist. <laughs> yeah, like I do it like that. Like I'll pretty much like have sweets. Like yesterday I had Chipotle for lunch. I had Panda Express for dinner. Like, uh -huh. you know what I'm That's saying? That's a good yeah. combo right there, I'm sleeping man. good last that night. Like it's good food, but like, I mean, I eat healthy majority of the time, but like, I don't know, like some, everybody's metabolism is yeah. different. So like. So, so Noah's in the bulking phase of his life mm -hmm. um, and he's young enough to do it. And their mm -hmm. their go to is panda because oh, panda you, gonna get you right because you can get so much fucking meat in if one. You to, if you're trying to bulk, you're trying to get, oh, trying to get swole. God. Panda Express will be the the yeah, place you will go. I did not know that. That's a for cheap. So, no, so what, what is it? What is it? Um, what's the metric that you guys call it? Calorie per dollar CPD. CPD calorie per dollar. <laughs> and then do you have? And then what would it be PP for protein per dollar PPD? Yeah. I guess or something like that. You just, yeah. just trying to like bulk yeah, up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's all he's. Yeah. Um, this is alcohol. becoming a little big, bro. Mm -hmm. Alcohol, you drink it all, or you try the to stay away from it. The last time I drank was maybe like a month or two ago. Like I don't Damn. really like drink like every, like a lot. Like I'll drink when I'm out with my boys. Like if yeah. I'm out with my dogs, like and we having yeah. a good time, of course I'm gonna drink. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? Or I might, yeah, I might go to a bar and like grab like a drink, get, grab some food. Like what? I recently I've been going to a lot of like St. Pete and Tampa. What do we got? What do we got? Oh my Let's god! Let's talk about them. Sweet, Which... low key like bar. Okay. Go okay. to Tiki Doc on yeah uh 34, 34th, 31st. Uh huh. Tiki Doc, that's a great bar. Really? They got good food. They got good drink. Been. Okay. It's on the water. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot of good spots. There's another spot in Tampa. But like I've been going to a lot of like restaurants. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Go there, get some food, grab a drink. You know what I'm saying? My wife's my wife's favorite place in Tampa is. Is Olivia. It's a it's an Italian restaurant in mm -hmm. Tampa, and they're building one actually here downtown St. Pete. I, my my cousin Izzy was talking about Olivia, so it's yeah, so I heard it's good. They're building one at the bottom of Ascent in downtown St. Pete, so eventually we'll get one. But any other spots? So we talked about this all the time, right? Mm -hmm. We love talking about like the St. Pete spots. 
Um, my favorite steak spot is Bo and Mo's over by uh, St. Pete High. It's a lot of people's I'm starting It's to an hear. Italian it's steakhouse. Good. It's It looks shitty. Not mm -hmm. shitty. It looks like a little hole Don't in the wall. All right, them. sorry. It doesn't... It, it, <laughs> when, it's not Burns is what you I'm You wouldn't getting think at. of you, what correct. it is. You're not driving outside. up and you're like, oh, this is Burns Steakhouse. Right. No, it's, it's Bo and Mo's. It's like this small look. It's so dope and it's delicious. What's your go-to as far as like steak? Around. To be honest, I'm not like a super fancy restaurant guy. Like yeah, maybe if I'm going out awesome. on a on a date, okay, cool, then that's fine. I, we could do that. But like if I'm just like 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 myself or something, like I could do like Outback, like regular Ooh. restaurants Let's like that. Go. Outback, okay. Texas. I love okay. Texas because the roads. Yeah, yeah. my yeah. wife does yeah, too. Yeah. Okay. Put, put the road, a little picture of the roads yeah, right here. Yeah, they go crazy. Yeah. So I, Texas, like Outback, <laughs> like. Stuff like that, okay. like I don't really need, like I don't need nothing. Okay, crazy. so then what like, about let's let's go sushi because we. we I can't talk, even talk about sushi. I you don't, don't like, like it? sushi. But so I want to hear, and chains are included. <laughs> chains are I like fine. My, I like my fit. I like my food cooked, bro. Yeah. Like, you know okay, what I'm saying? All right, all right. all right, so it doesn't matter if it's a chain, whatever. Top mm -hmm. four places in St. Pete because you live in St. Pete, right? Yeah, yeah. So top four spots to go to eat. Are we talking about like just regular spots? Anything, anything, anything like. You, you get out, you go train, you're like, I'm trying to go grub. Top four places. Okay. Y'all ever been to Kava on 4th yes. Street? Yes. Kava's, Kava's out there. Very good. They got, they got good, healthy food. Yeah, they can't. You can't. People like uh, Fresh Kitchen. I'm not a Fresh Kitchen guy. Hit or miss okay. for me. Yeah, exactly. Hit or miss. Uh, obviously, you have like the regular spots like Chick fil A, Chipotle, Chipotle yeah. Panda Express, Puyo Tropical is good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so all those sound like they're the group third option. Yeah, like yeah, like just like the, the back options. I would never. Chains. I haven't I haven't touched like McDonald's, Burger King since like college. Yeah, like, I hate those Good spots. Man. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't like those spots. Uh, I'm trying to think, it's like okay, anything downtown that you that you like? Anything downtown? You, any, anything you go downtown for? I don't really go downtown for restaurants. I'll go downtown for bars. Like you know okay. what I'm saying? Grab a drink. Uh, go to spot. obviously, obviously the uh, the strip in downtown, you yeah. can just walk around right, in right. a circle and yeah. you can go through all the bars, yeah, like uh, like oh, five, like five bucks or something, like something like that, yeah, like, but yeah, I've been a, I, I've been to five bucks last year, I've been there yeah. recently, like, uh, is it it's still five bucks, right? But you said next to it's the garden that they built out, right, or something that's, like that. Is, there's a new bar downtown that I'm, I'm meaning to go to, it's like, yeah. is it the garden? It's something, it's. What what's it's a new bar down there, bro? There's a couple though. I mean the Xmas bar, but that, that no, not the up. Xmas bar. There's um, the jungle. Oh, concrete jungle. Concrete jungle, yeah. That's, that's what see, it is. Okay. see, now I might go there this Where's weekend. Yeah. I need to, it's so, downtown. So it's where Iberian Rooster was. You remember Iberian Rooster? So off of exactly. Central and like Fifth. So it's the same. The guy that owns that is Stephen Shaw. I know him well. He's mm -hmm. he's he owns a hunger thirst group. He's the same owner as. Park and Rec, yeah. all of those. Oh, so he run, he's pretty much running down. He runs all there. of them, basically. Yeah. So he has like five or six, or maybe seven. He does dirty laundry. He has dirty laundry. He just opened up Dirty Concrete laundry, Jungle. a nice spot, too. Yeah, Concrete Jungle. It's like this. Mm -hmm. It goes underneath. You been there? Iberian. Okay. No, I've seen pictures and stuff. Yeah, and me I, too. I haven't been there yet. I actually, he was telling me when he first was building out, he's like, yeah, we're taking over the Iberian Rooster spot, and we're building out this cool little bar. So I... I want to. I want to go for sure. Maybe no, hit gonna, me I'm up this weekend. Check it, like, yeah, 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 check yeah. it out. We all go check yeah, it out. Like, I mean, hey, hey, make a trip. Shoot the next podcast. Hey, I'm in the downtown. Talk show. Talk show. Talk hey, show. I'm, I'm, I'm always down. You know what I'm saying? Nice. I mean, I don't drink a lot, but I, I'm always down. Like, grab yeah. a drink. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just yeah, vibe sure. out a little bit. So, we, we I'm trying to update. I'm trying not to drink this year. Yeah. Okay. Not so. I'm doing the dry January thing for sure. Do you drink a lot? I was. Oh yeah, he was. See, see, then, uh, yeah. Okay. Not like a crazy amount, but like NFL Sunday every, rolls every around. Every yeah. Weekend, yeah, I'm yeah. definitely gonna crack at the tail end of the holidays. I got in the Guinness train. That's how you know Ooh, I really was doing it. Damn. But oh, now man. I'm trying to cut it. I'm trying to have as much of a sober year as possible to see what life is looking like after the end of the 365 days. I'm cool. happier Heck that yeah, I get more dude. stuff done. You might as well try it out. Yeah, so I might have a uh, Diet Coke on the rocks with you guys or something like that. You can like still that. go have fun, you know? I'm like, that's, yeah. Yeah, you, you don't need alcohol. Bro, I could have a great time yeah, without alcohol. Without alcohol. I, don't, I don't even need yeah, it. For sure. Well, okay, one thing to kind of uh, Wrap this round up. this out. Um, yeah, a couple minutes. I want to do a fantasy draft. Oh, jeez. Okay? I want to do a GOAT fantasy draft. It could be whether it's an athlete, a musician, a movie, a dish, whatever the GOAT is. Okay. I feel like the GOAT, the term is probably loosely used these days, whereas back in the day, you know exactly what you're talking about or who you're talking about when you think of the greatest of all time. Okay. But as time has gone on, 
people have different goats, different variations of goats. So let's go into fantasy draft. Will, we're going to start with you. Again, it doesn't have to be sports. Four, four right. picks, the goat draft. When I think sports, or the goat, I think sports, I got to go with Michael Jordan. Dang it. Okay, well, I'm, I'll he, go. I just, he's, just, he's like the goat of goats, you know? I got you. No, he's not. I am mad Stop at you. Stop that. Stop Way to that. start it off, Will. You know Way to not. start it off. What do you mean he's not? You, when, he's, you, when everyone around who, the world thinks best who, athlete of all time, they think Michael Jordan. You go to China, Michael Jordan. No, I, 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 would, I would debate Tom Brady is more dominant. In, well, in, that was my number two pick. And, of course, well, if, I if got if Brady. If you're saying athlete is different, greatest of all time is, Tiger Woods. is literally greatest of all time. Yeah, so Tiger Woods for sure is, is, is probably no, most no, no, dominant. No, no, no. He's not number one. The Golden Bears got more wins than him. He's got more majors. So if you're talking X's and O's, yeah, he's got more money, him and LeBron, but he does not have the most majors in all of golf. All right. So he's technically not the GOAT. So I'm going to go Brady. All right. I would hope so. I go with Tom. that thing on. All right. And um, I'm going Brady. When I hear, I when said, I hear, no, no. So oh, we're doing a draft. Different? Yeah, oh. he's still, he's, so, okay, yeah, okay. it's a fantasy draft. So you have four okay, picks. We only got one. Braun. Yeah. LeBron? Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 what am I going to do? How are you taking yeah, that? Oh, <sighs> All right, I'm going to go a different route here. I'll come back to sports because I have a method to the madness Yeah, here. I want to think of some other stuff. I'm going to go with Dave Chappelle. Yes, he is a goat. Oh, I got Did you watch books. the new stand-up? Not yet. I'm going to get to that. Uh, I cannot wait for that. Um, okay, so two. Hmm. Oh, fuck. I, I mean. I'm not honestly prepared for my own draft. Um, yeah, all right, I'm going to go. I'm just going to get this out of the way because the greatest shooter of all time you're just going to say Steph? Like, who cares? I'm going to go the GOAT. Okay. I'm going to go Steph Curry. Jesus, anyway. Yo. The greatest of all time at shooting the basketball. <laughs> See, mine was about to be Steph. Thank you. Uh, like I said, there is your... Okay, I'm a, I, I switched it up. I'm going to go a rapper. I'm going to go Yak, Kodak Black. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay. Florida boy. Yeah, Florida boy. Florida boy. Yeah, I'm going to go with Yak. I'm going to go with Yak. I'm going to go with Yak. I, uh... I got to go... I'm going to go the, the lifting route. I got to go Chris Bumstead. Dude, he's the that GOAT the, over Arnold? You're just oh, going to give him over Chris, Arnold? Uh, Chris has five in a row. Arnold has six in a row. Yeah, but he, he keeps throwing out stats for people that have less Jake, victories. your box score. I like Chris. Yeah, you got to know these global stats. I like Chris over, over Arnold. He I get have... Arnold was first. I get it. But I like Chris over Arnold. Man. Okay. And I, honestly, I like Chris's physique more than I like Arnold's, even though... Arnold's is better than like some of these other Roy guys, like like uh, Robert yeah. Coleman. I didn't like his his. Body. I gotta say, I like Arnold's physique because it's just less. It is like longer. veiny. It is longer. And yeah, yeah, I get it. But I, I, I'm not knocking Chris though. But you keep throwing. You're like T Woods. He's got the most wins. Nope. Whatever. But like, Chris Bumstead right. got the most wins. Nope. Thank Chris. you, Will. It, it, this is our goat. Okay, this is fair. Okay. But I love that Will's yeah, checking all, all right. Time. All right. So I'm gonna go best director, movie guy of all time. Um, Christopher Nolan, he's the guy that did Ooh. Inception, Interstellar, all of that. So I'm gonna throw it up to him. Did you watch Interception or Inception yet? Well, let's get the name right. All first. right, I'm gonna throw it back on you. Did you watch The Revenant yet? No. Yeah, exactly. Both Will three for three, three, baby. Let's go. I, I got to I'm gonna go Tiger. Wait, no, I got another one. You got one. two picks. You're not, you're pick not Tiger gonna pick Tiger. Tiger. Will's got Jake Tiger. all out of sorts right now. <laughs> you're not gonna pick Tiger. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I I was probably gonna try to take the music route, well defined portfolio. Um, People go, and I'm a guitarist, so we go a lot of different ways, but everyone kind of brings it back to Jimi Hendrix. So oh, I got to say, he's the best guitarist. All right, so you, just, go you just reminded me, I got to go Drake. It's just, Dang it. Is oh, what it is. <laughs> that was next. Oh, y'all boys keep that was next. Oh, that's a good one. It's a great one. Uh, uh, probably, uh, I'm gonna go with Denzel Washington. Oh, like that's a good one. Yeah, I like at there. We'll go at there. There you go. Oh, the actor route. I forgot yeah. about the big screen. Okay. Well, we talked about Leo. Did you want to get Leo? I was thinking Leo. Leo. Leo's, 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 yeah, Leo's he's up the goat. there. He's a goat. I know he is. Dang it. Okay, so I'm about to round out my picks with these two. Right? Did I already do mine? Okay. No, I we, we got one more. Okay. Um. Mm, 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 mm. Dude, you made this up. Like, I know, I know. Have. Well, you both, some of you have already picked some Nobody of my picks. Nobody picked a golfer. Pick a golfer. I'm not a big golf guy. That wouldn't right. be my go. Oh. I'm not a big soccer guy myself. Ooh. Oh. No. Um, Get out of here, bro. <laughs> All right, I'll go, Le I'll go Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, I'm okay. A, I'm going to go Messi. Then, yeah. Yeah. No, dude, soccer. come on. <laughs> We're talking about soccer. Okay. Oh, uh, shit. Um... All right, I'm gonna go the other route. I'll go. I'll go. I'm gonna go Barry Bonds. Wow, mm, okay. Barry Bonds. I'll yeah, go baseball. Okay, okay. Wow. 
You guys Is just not stole. A go nah, you guys just stole my top two picks over there. Give me a cat. Throw a random category at, at me, and I'll yeah, just pick a go. That's a good one. Let's go. Uh, expand Show? this. Um, Show. Okay. Ooh, you got some cool. <laughs> there we go. Nah, nah, nah go I can go wrestling. I like the show, and that's a tough one. If I had to go greatest show of all time, just it, it's so hard, and I'm leaving so many out, but I got to go Game of Thrones, I think. All right. Dang it. Game of Thrones. Okay. okay can, Noah can we, brought it up, though. WWE. Can we go honorable mention wrestling right now? Sure, sure. Let's do it. Go, go ahead. Honorable Do you know wrestling like that? I do, but like, I'm not the biggest like wrestling. You're talking WWE, right? Yeah. So I got to give it up to The Rock. Yeah. Wrestling. Okay. Right. Okay. The Rock is like it. You better um, not take mine. I, I'm saying John Cena. Just okay. John okay. Cena's up there. What you got? I'm gonna go Rey Mysterio. Oh, oh Mysterio. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go right, Mysterio. Man. I'm gonna go the Nature Boy. Rick oh, Rick. Yeah, yeah, classic. classic. Hey, give it. Give, give us one. Woo! Yeah. Audio peaks. <laughs> um. All right. My last pick, real quick. I'm gonna go uh, your boy Tiger Woods. Oh, so we're throwing on one more. All right. No, that no, no, no. Serious. I didn't get four. I didn't get four. Get Whatever. Oh, yeah, because he had to go twice. It was uh, just like, all right, Darius, thanks for... No, for sure. Appreciate you having me. Appreciate it. Good time, man. We're going to have you back on. Yeah, for and, sure. Uh, uh, Till happy, next time. Uh, happy Friday. Till next time? Oh, no, you got it. Till next time. Cut it.